Islam came to England before there was England. You may be thinking, what am I talking about? I'm going to share something very powerful with you today. You cannot imagine how Islam influenced British life even before Muslims came to Britain. There was a king called Offa in the 8th century living in Britain, current day England. There was no England at the time. There were Anglo-Saxon principalities. Anglo-Saxons were spread out throughout British territory in current day England. And there were some small principalities of the Anglo-Saxons, right? One of them was called Mercia. Mercia was in current day England. It wasn't called England at the time. This country collectively came to be known England later on, quite late, right? So at this time, this was a territory called Mercia. And king was Offa, who was a Christian king who ruled from 756 to 796. At his time, Offa copied the Islamic dinar. And this dinar was minted by the Abbasid Caliph al-Mansur, who was ruling from Baghdad in the 8th century. The dinar Offa copied was minted in the year 157 after Hijra. 157 Hijri, in other words. Okay, so what was the dinar made of? It was made of gold, it was 4 grams in weight, and it had dawa messages on it. Muslim currency, early Muslim money or early Islamic money had direct dawa messages inscribed on it. For example, the gold dinar had formulas like La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah and he has no partners. On the other side of this Islamic dinar, minted by the Umayyads and the Abbasids later on, we had Muhammad Rasulullah inscribed on it. Muhammad the Messenger of God. Then we had verses or formulas taken from the Quran like Muhammad Rasulullah arsalahu bil huda wa deen al haq liyudhirahu ala deen kulli taken from chapter 9 of the Quran verse 33. Uh, so brothers and sisters, on the Islamic dinars we had dawah messages inscribed for the Muslims to see so that the Muslims are reminded that this is sacred currency. This is a trust from Allah. This money Muslims possess is not theirs. Rather, it belongs to Allah. So earn it carefully and spend it carefully. Spend it morally, earn it morally. That was the message. So even the money at the time was giving da'wah to Muslims and non-Muslims. So what happens in the 8th century? Because the Abbasid dinar was the best currency in the world due to the purity of gold, it was readily accepted by international markets or in international markets at that time, you can call it the dollar of the day. So the Mediterranean trading markets in the Mediterranean region where European traders were coming to trade with the Muslims, there was cross-pollination of ideas, influences, religions at that time between the Muslims and the Europeans. Europeans are taking the Islamic currency with them because it was the best currency in the world due to the quality of the gold. European gold was not accepted at that time because the quality of gold was very substandard. So in order to meet the economic needs of the time, European kings started to imitate copy Islamic dinars. In other words, they started to forge Islamic dinars for them to be accepted in these international markets. And these copies were made quite closely. The money makers of European kings did a good job. If you look at this coin right now, this coin can be found in the British Museum. It has Muhammad Rasulullah inscribed on it very, very clearly. But if you turn it upside down, in Latin, it states Offa Rex, in other words, King Offa. So this coin is a copy of an Abbasid dinar made in England, made in Britain in the 8th century at the orders of King Offa by his money makers. Why was Offa doing it? He was doing it for economic reasons. Because the Abbasid currency, the Abbasid gold was best, the best in the world. So this currency was readily uh, acceptable or it was, it was enthusiastically spent and accepted in international markets at the time. But Offa had no idea that he was doing dawah by minting the formula Muhammad Rasulullah on the coin. Even though Offa himself was a Christian king, he had no idea what was being inscribed on the coin 
but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his ways. The dawah of Islam, the dawah of the Muslims had reached Britain before Muslims stepped on this island. Dawah came to England before there was England. This is the point I'm trying to raise. Look at this coin. It has La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la inscribed on it. It has Muhammad Rasulullah inscribed on it. It has the name of the English king or the Anglo-Saxon king who ro ruled a territory called Mercia in the 8th century. So this coin was minted between 774 to 790 CE. 774 to 790 CE. As early as the 8th century. So the Dawah of Islam came almost 150 years after the Prophet of Islam died in Arabia. The Prophet died in 632 CE and by 770, by 770, the Dawah of Islam on coins or through coins or through economic activity had reached Britain, in particular England. I thought I must share this story with you. Dawah is dynamic, never belittle it. And this shows you that the history of Dawah in Britain did not start with Muslims coming to Britain in the 20th century. Rather, the history of Dawah in Britain started in the 8th century, soon after the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, passed away.